globalism, a rejection of elitism, uh, and, and really some of that uh, you know, East Coast snobby uh, anti-liberty garbage. What is your take on Piers Morgan? Because he is truly loathed by left, right, and center. Well, I, I agree with that uh, completely. I mean, I always feel sorry. I don't care if Satan got fired. I would feel bad for him having been a married man who got fired. So I never take pleasure in the firing of other people. However, he was almost uniquely annoying in that he's a foreigner, for one thing. For another, he had this kind of supercilious tone, like, you're just not as smart as I am, that did make you kind of want to, you know, make people angry. And he didn't understand America. I mean, he just... You know, he thought our attachment to guns was like uh, compensating for, you know, lack of male virility or something. He didn't understand it's baked into the cake that is this country. The right to bear arms is the linchpin of our freedoms. Without that, you know, you really don't have... The revolution started when they came to take the guns. Li literally. So if you don't understand the Second Amendment, and maybe you're uncomfortable with it, maybe you don't like guns personally. I happen to like guns personally, and I like to hunt. But even if you don't, you recognize if you were born in this country that it's like not this random thing the founders kind of threw in there. It's the Second Amendment. Number two, right after freedom of speech, there's a reason. Well, speaking of that, uh, we see talk of ending net neutrality, talk of internet IDs, taxation. We see big dinosaur media promoting it, openly wanting to shut down their competition, DrudgeReport.com, DailyCaller.com, uh, WorldNetDaily.com, InfoWars.com. I don't think they can put the genie back in the bottle, but what do you think overall will be the establishment's response to Congress having lower than a 10% approval rating and all of their credibility draining away? The New York Times saying, as you know, a few months ago, we don't have any credibility. We can't set the agenda. Uh, nobody listens to us anymore. That's right. Well, I mean, we're... There's a free-for-all, basically, right now. The people, the public look to for guidance and to make sense of the news are discredited. Basically, every institution is discredited. I'm not sure that's a good thing. I don't, I'm not really sure I want to live in a country where no one has credibility, but that's kind of where we are right now, and that's why you're seeing this kind of chaotic political environment. I would say one thing about the Congress and the President. The Congress has a terrible, you know, 10 percent. The President is literally less popular than the crackhead mayor of Toronto, Rob Ford. Yes. Literally. But they still control the levers of power. So the President still runs the executive branch, Congress still gets to make the laws, raise the revenue. They can still absolutely wreck your life if they want to. So they have no popularity, they have no moral authority, but they retain massive amounts of power. It's a weird, weird situation. And it's happened a lot throughout history. Seeing Obama, undoubtedly, constitutional scholars left, right, agree. If you disagree, tell me why. Power grab on the power plants, on the military, saying NATO's over our military, on Obamacare, on borders, on immigration. Truly, I'm not saying he is a dictator. I'm saying he's turning the office of the presidency into a unitary executive dictator 2.0. Well, that's always the hope of every president. I mean, people look, executives want more power. You know, the guy in charge doesn't want to have to deal with, like, inconvenient things like other people's opinions. And that's why we have a three-part system where you have the judiciary, you know, the, the courts, you have the legislative branch, the Congress, and then the president has to deal with those two branches. What I'm amazed by is how unwilling Congress has been to rein in the president. He's basically said to them, I don't care about you. I'm going to write my own laws. You'd think they would stand up as one and say, whoa. We reserve the right to write the laws. Like, that's what the Constitution says. There's a reason for that. And instead, they're so very passive. The Democrats are passive because it's their party and they will do whatever the president asks. But Republicans have been weirdly passive on that. And I'm not really sure why. Well, I think it's because you've got a lot of offshore interests that basically have diplomatic immunity. And they don't need a free market. They can just control government and get the corporate welfare and the insider deals and create a monopoly system. I think. That's really what the left and right haven't woken up to, is that more and more it's a rigged game. Well, to some extent, it is. I mean, look, people don't want competition if they can get away with it. If I could pass a law requiring everyone to read the Daily Caller every day, you know, I like to think I wouldn't pass the law, but I'd be sorely tempted. That's why the insurance companies got into Obamacare at the very beginning. In exchange for losing their freedom, they gained a captive market. You know, the, 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 mandate, you know, the requirement to buy health insurance insured them lots of new customers. So it is, in, to that extent, it is a rigged game. All right, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with more of that interview between Tucker Carlson of The Daily Caller and Alex Jones. An explosive interview. I loved what he said about the passivity of Congress. Why are they allowing Obama to be a dictator? What's up with that? 
He's asking the right kinds of questions. We'll be right back with more of that interview. Stay tuned. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to generate an endless supply of natural silver solutions, silverlungs.com. You'll find no wild claims or pseudoscience, just a lifetime of nano-sized pure silver solutions. The Silver Lungs Generator allows you to make your own, so stop paying for silver solutions. The unique lung delivery system targets respiratory infections where other silver solutions simply cannot reach. See the Silver Lungs Generator and Lung Delivery System at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. We the people grow cotton, weave fabric, engrave ink, embed strips and fibers to protect from counterfeit, then carting to a private bank, having it lent back at interest, forcing taxes to service debt. This capitalism, or was Jefferson correct when stating a central bank issuing the public currency is a greater menace to the liberties of the people than a standing army? Ted Anderson, I'm placing a free silver dollar in a book that explains our monetary system. Call for your copy, 800-686-2237. It's time to understand the system. Call 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy bodies products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. Hi there. My name is Frank Bates. What I'm about to tell you in the next 60 seconds could get me in a lot of trouble. I just created a free video presentation at 123coverup.com that exposes the electricity monopolies and government agencies for what they really are. Incompetent, lying crooks that are counting on your ignorance and fear to keep your power bills criminally high. Some have called this a conspiracy. Others have called it a cover-up, and you will be shocked to find out how deep the conspiracy goes. My video at 123coverup.com exposes the truth and shows you the secret of how I beat them and how you can beat them too. Watch the controversial video that thousands of other smart patriots have already seen in the last three months. Go to 123coverup.com and discover one weird trick to slash your power bill and protect your home. Go watch my video now at 123coverup.com before they force me to shut it down. Again, that's 123coverup.com. Hi folks, Alex Jones here with some important information. I want to tell you about Matt Redhawk and his team of patriots over at My Patriot Supply. Several years ago, Matt was sitting in his two-bedroom apartment, frustrated with the direction this country was headed, and the charlatans willing to sell us out for a quick buck. Deciding to take action, a company run by Patriots for Patriots was born. My Patriot Supply has never taken a loan or accepted outside funding. They now operate two distribution facilities and employ over 50 hardworking American men and women. It is rare to find companies who practice what they preach. And that's why I stock my pantry with high-quality storable foods from My Patriot Supply. Go to MyPatriotSupply.com forward slash Alex today for special offers on emergency food storage or call their preparedness specialist at 866-229-0927. That's 866-229-0927. Do business with someone who shares your values. MyPatriotSupply.com slash Alex. <laughs> Welcome back to The Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here live in studio. Now, we have a taped interview that we've been playing between Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson, commentator and founder of The Daily Caller. An amazing interview. We're going to go right back to that. But I just want to point out that Paul Joseph Watson has a story up on Drudge linked. Homeland Security is using intercepted emails to question a woman about her sex life. Absolutely amazing. But let's go back to that interview. We'll be right back with more news. But this is an interview between Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson. Let me ask you this question, looking out into the future. What do you see happening 
as the huge awakening takes place, and even the Financial Times of London says the whole world is going libertarian, uh, getting past the political labels, just saying we want freedom, we want more individual liberty across the board, versus the authoritarian consolidation where it doesn't matter that we're awake to them, they're still in power. How do those two forces collide? Well, I, I, wish, I wish that were true. I mean, I've always been on the libertarian side of libertarian instincts. I think libertarians overstate the degree to which people yearn for liberty. Most people yearn instead for security, and they're willing to trade liberty for it. And I, I wish that weren't true, but it seems like human nature for most people moves in that direction. I think I'm an anomaly. I would rather take care of myself. I would rather have freedom than security. I'm willing to take risks in exchange for the ability to make my own decisions. But most people, it seems like, aren't. I feel like we're moving away from that. Is, so you don't think there's an awakening happening? I think there's a great dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. I think people are disgusted with their leaders, but I don't see people jumping up and saying, I want to take responsibility for my own life. You know what? I don't want your Medicare, actually. I'm happy to buy my own health insurance. I'm happy. No, I see the point you're making is that people can claim that there's a rise in libertarianism in polls. People will say... They'll say that they identify like that, but that's not actually what Well, exactly. Doing. So libertarianism has two parts. The first part is I get to do whatever I want, and the second part is you get to do whatever you want as long as we don't hurt each other. Yeah. People buy into the first one completely. I want to smoke my weed. I want to marry whoever I want. That's fine. They're all about that. They're very libertarian when it comes to them and their choices. They're not libertarian when it comes to other people's choices. So in order to be libertarian, you embrace your freedom, but you also embrace restraint. I could control what you do, but I'm not going to. I choose not to control you. And most people are unwilling to resist the temptation to control other people. And that's just human nature, but it's very distressing. And libertarians have to be honest about that. So where do you see it going then? The, 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 the future of the media, government? I'll t look internationally. I am amazed by the number of countries. And look, the bottom line is I don't know. I'm just a journalist. I'm not any kind of prophet. But internationally, I'm very struck by the move from democracy and freedom toward reverting back to authoritarian systems. Look at Venezuela, for example, which was sort of a, you know, emerging kind of free market world. Now we're back to Chavez, and he's gone. But Chavezism. Look at Nicaragua. It was communist. They had a brief experiment with liberal democracy under Violeta Chamorro. Daniel Ortega, the head of the Sandinista party, is president again. You're seeing this same pattern replayed. Let me ask you one quick question. 15 years ago, 12 years ago, when Bush said, we're going to bring democracy to the world, the world needs democracy. How many people believe that still? How many people would like to see democracy in Saudi Arabia or Jordan? Nobody would. We're actually happy that they have authoritarian governments. We don't want their people to vote and be free because well, it would be against our interests. I guess you do have a point is that a lot of people say I'm libertarian and there's an awakening and a dissatisfaction with the government, but it's almost like a double-minded uh, paradox because then people are more accepting of Big Brother, of police exactly. state, of authoritarianism exactly. than ever. It's boiling the frog. You know, you throw the frog into boiling water, he jumps out. If you turn it up slowly, he doesn't notice until it's too late. I'm not, I'm not an apocalyptic guy at all, but I am really bothered by the willingness of most people to accept these restrictions on their freedom in the name of security. I mean, I wish I could, I think I'm just speaking for myself when I say, I'm happy to take the risk, you know, in exchange for like keeping my shoes on at the airport. I, I'm really bothered by that. Well, history's shown when you give up liberty, you don't get security, you get oppression and tyranny, you, you become a slave. It, you don't get it back. Yeah, and I try not to, I don't want to be like one of these guys or, you know, overstating things, but I am really bothered by it. Well, we are definitely going into a police state, and like you said, it's a movement worldwide. Speaking of attempts to censor the press, the Pentagon announced three months ago, I don't know if you saw this report, uh, Drudge carried our report on it, but it was just their hour-long press conference, where the uh, Undersecretary of uh, Defense sat up there and said, we've lost the hearts and minds of the American people. They don't believe the government and the media anymore. So our answer is we're going to start telling the truth by going out and engaging blogs and alternative media domestically. We can no longer rely on relationships with a handful of journalists. A new blogger might end up being more influential than traditional outlets in some cases. If we aren't talking to him or her, we are mentioning, missing a potential opportunity to inform the American people. And we cannot hide our bad news stories. Bad news gets out one way or the other, and we must come to terms with telling the bad stories as well as the good. When bad things happen, the American people should hear it from us, not as a scoop on the Drudge Report. <laughs> All right, stay tuned. We're going to be right back with more thought-provoking, insightful discussion between Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson. Don't miss it. Stay tuned.
We're on the mark.